What's up, everybody? Folks, it is I, and I am back on YouTube. I am uploading all of my videos really soon, so just have some patience with me. We are in week 12 of marathon training, week 12, and we're about 67% done. Can you even believe it? I cannot, I cannot believe it. It's been whew, a long time and I'm really ready for it to be over, but we're almost there. I have six or seven weeks or actually seven weeks away from the big day in Chicago. And uh, let me get you caught up because during this training cycle, I have been running some races. Last week, we did a half marathon at night in Roswell. That was really, really great. I will definitely post a picture here so you can see. And then I'm going to post actually a whole nother video talking about that race because it was very unique. And this race this past weekend uh, on Saturday was the REI Atlanta Relay 10K or 20K. I did this race last year. This is the 10th year and actually the final year, which is so sad because last year I did this race and it was the relay race and it was so much fun. We had to create a team. Last year was kind of last minute. I'll post some, some pictures here of last year, but it was so much fun. We did, um, it was four loops, but different legs. So you had me, somebody else, somebody else, somebody else. And this year, because of the training schedule, I had 12 miles to do this weekend. And so it was like, it just makes sense. Just do the 20K. It was not as fun. And I, it has nothing against the organizers. The race was amazing. I loved going. It was the route and the loop. So instead of a different way, the 20K, you literally saw the same thing four times and that was a little bit boring for me plus it was humid out and it was not super hot but it was very humid and you know anywhere in Atlanta Georgia you're gonna have hills so there were hills um but the great thing about this race was that and I didn't even expect this the very first mile that I started out, I ran into somebody that was running at my pace. And it was an older gentleman. He looked maybe in his early or late 50s, early 60s, and he was hobbling along. And so I was like, hey. And he goes, hey. And I'm just keeping pace. And I thought, wow, this would be cool if we could, you know, just kind of run together and give me a running buddy. And it turned out that he was running a 10K and we ran it together. Uh, what was really remarkable about that was that I was able to share stories. We could share stories with one another. We had dialogue just about you know, the running community. It's one of the things that I want to do in Chicago. I want to be able to collect stories along the way. So the marathon for me is more than just a race. First of all, it's an opportunity of a lifetime to be invited to a, a major marathon, my very first major marathon that I'm, comp my first marathon period, but being that it's a major, like it's crazy. One of the things that I want to do is just literally talk to different runners. So if I'm running at a pace where somebody is b beside me, I can have a conversation and we can talk about their family and talk about why they started running. And so this gentleman by the name of Wallace, he said that he started running later in life, which was like amazing to me. And I have noticed that a lot of the black runners that I run into, they have the same story. They say that they start running later in life, which is really fascinating because I think a lot of these people started when they were kids. And one of the interesting things he mentioned was that last year he took first place in the 10K. He was first last year. And now he was running at the back of the pack with me. And so I was just really, really honored. Um, we laughed and I'm gonna post... Uh, again, a picture or a video of our conversation, but 
one of the things he left me with was he said to always cherish your health, always cherish being able to run because because of his injury, he had a sciatica issue. He needed some surgery on his back and he wasn't sure he wanted to get that taken care of because he fears about his running career. Uh, and so he was just like, you know, you should always treasure the ability to run. And I, of course I do. Like, I'm so grateful every time I get a chance to go out and run. I'm extremely grateful because at one point I did have an IT band injury and that was not a very fun time for me because it was painful and I, all I wanted to do was run. So So he ended up leaving me after he finished his 10K and I still had yet another 10K to do. Another two loops. No, another, yeah, another two loops. And um, it was not the easiest thing. (laughs) We finished out and guess what? Your girl finished the very last person. Like I was so concerned that I was going to get a, a DNF and run out of time because they said the time cut off was at 10 and I literally came through there probably like 10 or 1 10 or 2 but one of the other ladies that I actually run with for our marathon training was right there and, and there was a bicyclist I guess I don't know what you call, what do you call those people that are pacers or they're the safety keepers I don't know what you call them but he rode up next to us and right next to me particularly and was like you know the last shall be first and the first shall be last and I was like thanks you're trying to encourage me because I'm the last person thanks a lot dude but I had a conversation with him and he was like um what did you have or we were talking about something And I said something about, oh, I shouldn't have eaten that pizza last night. He says, oh, I want some pizza. Where'd you get the pizza? And so I said, hey, you should come. There's a good pizza place out where I live. And so (laughs) that was the conversation that we had. But he ended up writing me in. And one of my sisters, my soul sisters, when she crossed, she just didn't look too well. And so she was dealing with, I think, dehydration. It was really not an easy race. We got our medals. I was soaked and ready to just get something to eat. Afterwards, they had a VIP session section for us to go. And we had massages waiting on us. We had fruit and some finger foods. They had beer, some Gatorade, Powerade, water. And we just chilled out for a little bit of time before we were, you know, sent home. But, um, That race, being that it was four loops, was not my favorite. So as a new runner, I'm learning that certain things that I like and certain things I don't like, I don't like loops because I like to see the scenery. I like waterfronts. I like beautiful green pastures. I like mountains. Like I like different things. And so we just kind of went around. It was in Canterbury area in Atlanta. Saw some pretty graffiti, but... How many times are you going to see that and go, ooh, that looks pretty again. I saw that last time. Um, The Atlanta PD was out there cheering us on. That was great. Every time I pass by a volunteer, I'm always saying thank you because that gives me my superpower to keep going. And um, being the last person out there, um, (laughs) the police officers had left, I think, at 945 they weren't there anymore. And I was like, "Mm, okay, running across these streets, myself taking risks of being hit because the officers were not there to direct traffic. I didn't feel bad that I was last. I started to think about, okay, we had the relay. Most people are here for the relay, right? And then you've got a whole nother race. You got the 10K people. So then 10K people, A lot of the people signed up for 10Ks. And then you have the 20K, which is almost a half marathon. So I'm thinking if I look at, I don't know, I have to look at the numbers. Maybe I'll put it up here. If you look at the numbers, then maybe there was not a a large group of people. I don't know. Maybe I'm just telling this to myself so that I feel better. But I don't don't really care because I... 
I felt like if you finish last, then you just have like a lot of room for improvement. You can improve. And that leaves me more space to improve. I, yeah, I don't have a problem with it. And I, I've been thinking about it for the last couple of days. I've been thinking like, man, do you have a problem with finishing last? Well, I don't. Just because I know that last year I was running at a faster pace. This year I'm slower, um, which I think there's a few reasons why that is. Uh, one, I got COVID at the beginning of the year and it really impacted me. And then also I was put on a medication that that literally I saw my pace drop two minutes after I started taking that medicine. So um, I just got to get myself back into the shape that I was before, continue to be consistent with my workouts. And as I go into this marathon in October, I'm just going to go in, enjoying the experience, enjoying and being grateful for the ability to run. Um, And that's going to be that, period. So I don't know if you guys are out there that are currently training for your first marathon, or maybe you're training for your first race in general of 5k. But I just want you to remember that this is a journey that this experience that you have started as a new runner, this is exhilarating at times, and it's going to be very hard at times. And you're going to want to quit in the beginning, and it's not going to feel good. But trust me, these these last two years that I've been able to build a consistent habit have been the most happiest times in my my physical body. Like I feel physically good about doing something for me. So keep it up. Oh, and if you notice that it looks like I have this coat, this jacket, it's it's not really a jacket. It's my robe because I often get chilly. So yeah, I'm vlogging with my robe on today. Anyway, have a great day, guys.